Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel, I'm RP, and today I'm going to show you how to make this awesome Spider-Man helmet. Stay tuned. So, sorry for the background noise. I always have printers running, but this is the Spider-Man helmet positioned on my CR-10S build plate. I position, positioned it a little bit back on an angle, and that uh, I think that gave me a really good way of lining up how I wanted to put in some of these supports. This middle section here, though, a lot of people think you need a support there. I'm just going to block that out right out of the gate, and I'll show you how that printed. You do not need to waste all of that filament supporting that flat uh, structure at the top of the head. So I'm just going to put a support blocker here. I'm going to just size it to the actual shape, uh, spread that out a little bit, um, and you're going to save a good amount of time and filament uh, just by blocking that out. As long as your printer is really tuned up, you're you're not going to need to have any type of supports uh, on that part of the helmet. And again, I'll show you here what that looks like in just a minute. So that looks good. Um, now we're going to look at uh, putting some supports there right in the eyes. The top of the eyes print uh, where a line starts to come that's just a little bit too uh, too much of an angle and you'd get a little bit of drooping. So you want to put at least some sort of support up there in the eye. Um, and as I look at this, uh, maybe it's kind of touching the helmet at the bottom a little. Um, I think what I can do is just set that back just a little bit more, remove those supports quickly. And I'm going to tilt the helmet back just a little bit so that we've got some more room for those supports. Uh, there we go. That looks better. And then we go in here and put those supports back in. Right there at the top of the eye line. And that way you're not going to have a drooping uh, print. It will be nice and sturdy. Uh, the other thing we've got to do is um, put some supports here at the back of the helmet and I'm going to make those a little bit thicker. I'm going to go 10 millimeters on those just because they're so tall. And then this is just going to give us a nice support on the back of the helmet. That back of the helmet also kind of prints in midair, which you can't have anything print in midair. Obviously it will just collapse. So that, uh, those two side pieces, that's looking good. Let's slice this and see what we get here and then I will also show you the settings that I have in my Cura slicer. We'll walk through that as well. You always want to take a look at uh, that's a day and 15 hours. It's not bad uh, and you can see my slicing settings. I'm a point two on the quality of the walls. I really don't change. I, I do 10% infill on pretty much everything I do. 210 and 65 for the heating of the uh, filament in the uh, bed. I go 60 millimeters uh, per second, and then I do a raft for um, the adhesion to the build plate with one layer. So pretty straightforward. Um, support density I have really low at 2%. Don't want to waste a lot of filament. And let's just preview this and see what it looks like. So so you always want to make sure that you've got a good build from top to bottom and especially when you start the build at the bottom and I don't see really good adhesion. So I'm going to go back in and actually add some supports underneath that chin because if you don't have good adhesion to the bed, specifically when it starts to build up on an angle, uh, your print will fail. So we're going to go in here and we're going to put... Oh. I could type. There we go. Uh, we're going to put some supports just right under here. Uh, they could be a little bit, a little bit bigger. 
Let me just take those out and go 10 millimeter. There we go. And perfect. It covers really nice. So I'm just going into that red section. And because I clicked no supports and I'm putting in manual supports, I really need to do that here. Otherwise, we're going to have a failed print. So that looks perfect. And we reslice. Always reslice. You never know what you're going to get in that software program. You want to make sure everything looks good. So let's just uh, go back in here. It's just slicing. And here we go. And OK, so it added an hour or so. Um, not bad. And if we now build this up, you can see at the bottom, at the chin, there's really good, there's really good support. You see those lines there? That's grabbing onto that PLA filament. That's what you want to see. So that's perfect. We build this up, and it's looking good. We want to see the eyes build out. That looks good. It's supporting the top. Uh oh, what's that? Whoa! Look at this. Look at this. I could not have hope for this. See that at the bottom of the plate? That's an error. That's one of the layers of the helmet that for some reason printed on the bed. That should never happen. This is why you always want to check your prints. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that happened. That was just, that was just luck that I could show you guys that. So uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, slice this again. So make some sort of a change, take it out, re-slice, and we should see that uh, weird part of the helmet no longer print on the heat bed. So again, this is the reason why you want to check every single time so you, you ensure that you've got a solid build from bottom to top. So let's go back down. That looks good. That You can see that part is now gone. It's not uh, on the bed. That looks absolutely perfect. I'm happy with this. I know it works because I've printed it already. And I'm going to now go in and um, show you what we did for the eyes. I won't show you how to position them in Cura, but I'll show you what they look like on the printer. Okay, so here we have them on the printer. You can see I basically just laid them so um, the corner of the eye is flat to the bed and then the eye builds upward. And then you'll be able to see once these are printed here, there's a support just kind of on that outer edge of the eye um that uh, just gives that that extra support this was on my elegu my larger printer and they came out perfect okay so this is what it looks like when it's printing you can see that there's nice adhesion to the bed and no support in the middle of that helmet i'll show you what that looks like physically on the back side of the helmet but when you look at this helmet after it printed without a support in the middle this is super smooth the filament came out smooth, the texture is smooth. On the back side of the helmet, you can see no support. And look at that, it's printing just fine. And I will uh, show you what this looks like once this, once this print finishes here. Uh, but it came out extremely smooth. Look at that. You couldn't get any smoother than that. It's it's just going to help with the post-production, the sanding, right? There's a lot less that goes into it. So once the heat bed cools, you can lift that off and your supports, you know, will pop off relatively easy. This one just fell off in my hand and the other one will probably just pop off. And here we are and uh, everything looks great. Okay, so... Here it is, unsanded. Uh, I, this is what it looks sanded. Uh, you've got to go watch my other uh, tutorials on my R2 videos about how to sand. Uh, this is not going to cover the how to sand, but once you've got it sanded, then we're ready to start putting on some wood filler so that we can get ready for primer. Again, this is not going to be a tutorial on how to do the filler and the sanding, but you want to put the filler on and get all of the imperfections, the lines, the layer lines that didn't come out in sanding. And then you want to just simply knock that down with some sandpaper. I go usually light, 120, sometimes 220, but you want a smooth surface to take on the primer. When you get to the primer, I love using the Rust-Oleum Filler Primer. You just want to go, you know, one, two coats with this, and it really fills in the layer lines quite nicely. 
Here's the uh, final coat, and you can see that has set up just great. And we'll just knock that down with some smooth sandpaper and get it ready for paint. So wood filler and uh, filler primer. It's awesome. It works so well. I'm Again, this is not going to go through how to sand the primer. Go to my part two R2 video of prep and prime. Um, that will show you how to do all of that. But you can see a few little layer line imperfections. We're just going to sand that down, put on more filler primer, and get some paint going. All right, we're ready for paint. This is just metallic gold, Rust-Oleum. And I put on probably about three light coats of this paint and it uh, works out really really nice why are we using gold because we're going to cover the gold in a dupla color anodized red it's what i used on my mark 85 iron man suit and so it uh, adheres really well to the gold now i am really sorry about the audio my printers are both going and it's loud um, i apologize but i wanted to show you now what i did to prepare for the lights in the eyes because the eyes light up. I got this LED um, strip that has a silicone um, rubber on the top to protect from moisture. And uh, I got a little 12, because this is a 12 volt light, and I got a little 12 volt battery. And this 12 volt battery goes into the 12 volt uh, battery case and simply just snaps in there like any battery. It has a positive and a negative terminal. And um, it's a little tricky, but what you need to do is you can see that there are some copper, oh boy, the light on this is so bad, some copper receding ends that you have to cut away that rubber silicone um, to get down to those little copper ends. And it's not that difficult. It really isn't. It seems scarier than it is, but just take a, I hope this is sharp, take a sharp X-Acto knife and just go right above those little copper receiving ends Of my camera will pick this up but you now have the copper pieces exposed you can see the part of the silicone that is cut out and now you have the copper and there is an indication on here as to which side is positive trust me it says right there this is positive it uh, says DC 12 volt plus so the upper side is what's positive. And if I didn't cut through um, the uh, wire, you should. There we go. There you go. So that is all lit up now. Um, I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to turn off the light so you can see it better. But you get the idea. You can see it's lighting up. So um, once this is all soldered, and then I just uh, have some wire that uh, I run through the helmet, I solder the positive to the positive, the negative to the negative, and then I simply just glued these inside of the eyes like that, and then put some uh, coverings over them. Uh, mesh coverings that I'll show you here in just a bit. So really it's a simple system. It's it's just a matter of getting uh, the positive to the positive terminal on the LED uh, strip and the negative to the negative terminal. You've got your battery and if you want to add um, a switch uh, you simply just add the switch to the circuit so you can turn the lights and on and off, which is what I ended up doing as well. So uh, the mesh that I was talking about um, that I put on top of the, uh, in front of the lights for the eyes is just this computer mesh. Uh, you can see it has uh, really teeny, teeny fine holes in it. And you can see the eye pieces 
that I cut out that go inside of the lenses. And I just painted this white, that's it. Um, and uh, glued these in, and when you double it up, um, it uh, really makes a nice, a nice effect. So, where you can see out, but you, people cannot see in. So this is what it looks like as a single layer, and this is what it then looks like as a double layer. So you can see how that really, um, how that really kind of filters out uh, folks looking in, but you can still see out. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this on my on my face, but um, yeah, I can see out just fine. But there's nothing that you can see as far as my eye, and uh, it uh, this works really really well. So let me show you how I put these into the helmet. Okay, so I used EVA foam and I traced the shape of the eye so I could glue the lights on the inside of that EVA foam piece. And then I, once I got those um, fixed in there, I then put on those mesh covers that I showed you and then I put another layer of EVA foam on top to just seal everything in. You can see the wires, they're glued on the inside of the helmet. I eventually ended up covering those with EVA foam, so it was a nice clean look. And then it transitions to this. It works great, it looks great, and you can still see through it when the lights are on. So I was dumb and did not actually record me putting the red anodized duplicolor paint on, but this is the first color, or the first coat. You go in very light coats, let it dry for 10 minutes. Apply the second coat, let it dry for uh, 10 minutes. If you want to go a third coat, you can. The more coats you go, the darker it becomes. But this is looking amazing. You can see how smooth this is. And uh, I've got the back of the helmet done. Um, so it looks fantastic. Everything looks great. I uh, want to show you what now we did for the eyes. It's very basic. Rust-Oleum Gloss Black. That's it. They look fantastic. So for the webbing, yes, I did go in and hand paint this. I got me some really fine detailed brushes and this was a labor of love. There are other ways to do this. You can tape it off, you can spray it. I just don't like taping off the anodized red because tape pulls that paint off and then you have to start over. So this came out fantastic. I'm pleased with it. It looks great. And uh, yeah, now basically what we just need to do, uh, since we have the front and back done, is move on to the sealer and put on some uh, high gloss clear. It's looking amazing. I mean, dang, that's smooth and glossy. Perfection. One thing I did not actually film is after I had the lights installed, um, you're probably wondering how did you get the back of the helmet attached to the front? If I were to try to put this on my head like this, it would not fit. Um, you could print the helmet larger and plastic weld these two halves together and then just slip it on that way. But what I, I like a nice snug fit, so this fits my head perfectly. And what I did is I plastic welded, and I don't know if you can see this very good, but I plastic welded uh, some rafts into the helmet, which are simply uh, magnets. So if you if you look at the tab, um, there's a magnet there, and it just pulls away from the side. And if you don't know what a raft is, a raft is simply um, plastic that's been printed on the 3D printer. And you can cut these rafts out to whatever size you want. Um, I use them all throughout my Stormtrooper uh, costume for the app piece, and they work really well. So you can see there's, um, there's a clip right there 
and there's a clip right there and you simply just move those to the side and then there is a uh, an elastic uh, that holds the top piece and so this just simply opens and you can see uh, the receiving male magnet right there um, and it allows you to put your head in and then uh, once you have your head in you just close it and it clips back into place so the other thing that I wanted to point out is um, with the wiring I covered everything Let's see if I can get some better light in here I covered everything uh, with uh, red EVA foam so you know the wires that are connected to the switch that are connected to um, the battery uh, they're all uh, enclosed now with red EVA foam that uh, goes throughout the helmet so it's a nice clean finished look so everybody that's gonna wrap up this video I hope you learned something I hope it was uh, informative and uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. I think this helmet looks absolutely amazing. And here's a cool thing. It's very versatile. Since it's the Iron Spider, maybe I could add it to my, my Iron Man Mark 85 suit. It looks pretty amazing. But uh, I'm really happy with how this came out. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And as always, thank you for your support.